Good morning and welcome to my messy desk. I'm Veronica Nye, Senior Economist at the Fertilizer Institute. Uh, today is August 6th and today we're going to cover uh, the released, the new release data that came out of the Census Bureau yesterday as it relates to imports and exports of fertilizer into the United States. And goodness, there's a lot to cover, so we'll dig in now. So first I want to talk about top line numbers across nutrients, so nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So as we look at um, the imported data, we're going to talk mostly about the second quarter of the calendar year, so April, May, June, um, because the data that came out uh, yesterday was the June data, so now we can fully talk about the second quarter. It's also relevant because the reciprocal tariffs that were put into place through IEPA um, came into effect in the second quarter. So they're really where we've seen the change in U.S. policy and other countries' reactions to that policy come through in the trade data. So um, from here on out, I'm mainly just going to focus there on the second the second quarter of this calendar year. So as we look, um, kind of dig into those numbers on a total nutrient basis uh, in the second quarter of 20, 2025, Nitrogen imports are down 20% on volume, uh, potassium imports are down 18% on volume, and phosphorus imports are down 44%. Now, inquiring minds might want to know what's what's that look like on the export side? Um, and as if you've been a subscriber here, you know that we don't necessarily produce very much um, potassium or potash in the US, so we're mostly, I'll mostly just focused to nitrogen and, and phosphorus. Um, but as we look at the impact of these tariffs and again, other countries' reaction to them, um, there certainly seems to be uh, some things going on there as well, uh, because in the second quarter of 2025, we're seeing that nitrogen exports are down 17% and phosphorus exports are down 15%. So both declining imports on, on total and declining exports on total. Now we're gonna dig into uh, product specific information, mainly on imports. So as we sort of think about nitrogen and, and phosphorus and, and potassium, I'll kind of talk about them in, in groups. So from a nitrogen perspective, in the US, about 30% of nitrogen consumption is urea, about 30% is anhydrous, and about 30% is UAN or nitrogen solutions, however your favorite way of describing that nitrogen product. Um, and we rely on imports uh, at a quite a higher level for both urea and solutions than we do anhydrous. So as we look at urea um, in the second quarter of 2025, uh, we see that those imports are down 17% relative to the second quarter of 2024, and solutions imports are down 23% relative to the same time last year. And I should have mentioned before, but this is all volume basis and not value. When we look at phosphorus imports, um, certainly a, a pretty heavy impact occurring there. DAP or diammonium phosphate, um, those imports are down 23% relative to the same time last year, and MAP imports are down a whopping 86% compared to last year. Um, and then when we look at uh, potash, um, sort of interesting things happening there. Uh, like I said, on total, potassium imports uh, on a nutrient basis are down, but we do see an interesting shift in what products are being imported, which makes sense. You'll, it'll be like, ah, obviously, when, when I talk about this, but when we think about potassium urate, potash, um, we kind of talk about it in two different buckets. One is a product that's coming in at 62% or less oxide, and then products that are coming in at 62% or greater oxide, so more concentrated. And you wouldn't be surprised to know that the less concentrated products, so 62% and below, those imports are down almost 50%. But uh, the product that's more concentrated, so more bang for your transportation buck, are up 95%. So, you know, interesting shifts occurring in what pro not only how much product is being shipped, but which products are being shipped, um, trying to, to make sure folks are maximizing their uh, their ability to get nutrient into the United States. There's been a lot of tariff action in the last few months uh, with additional um, changes being announced at the end of last week that are going into effect at the end of this week. Um, and so you all know that different countries have different levels of tariff being applied to them. 
Um, but the thing that probably stands out the most is that the U.S. imports a good amount of fertilizer product from Russia. And because the U.S. does not have permanent normal trade relations with Russia at the moment, Russia is actually exempt from tariffs uh, on fertilizer products into the U.S. So um, we've We've certainly seen some shifts in where product is coming from as a result of other countries being subject to 10% or greater tariffs and Russia not being subject to those tariffs. To put a finer point on that, let's put some numbers to it. So in the second quarter of 2024, the U.S. got 25% of its imported urea from Russia. During the same time period this year, the Russian market share has grown to 51%. Uh, when we think about uh, another product where we've seen some pretty significant cha change, UAN, nitrogen solutions. Last year, the Russian market share of imports in the second quarter were 49%. The Russian market share has now increased to 57% in the second quarter of 2025. So certainly some interesting shifts happening predominantly in the nitrogen space, um, but we do see um, uh, some additional uh, imports of, of MAP, that monoammonium phosphate coming into the U.S. from Russia as well. Uh, last year, they were 1% of U.S. imports. Uh, this year, during the second quarter, 31%. So some really interesting things happening, um, both on the import side, of course, uh, in the second quarter of this year, down across the board, across all major macros. Um, we're seeing shifts also in exports as other countries are, are maybe changing who they want to do business with. Um, but then also the, the shift in who is supplying the U.S. Um, becoming much more focused and concentrated on Russian supply away from those other uh, supplying markets. So thanks for tuning in. See you all next week.